Tinubu has the most dangerous cabals among all the presidents Nigeria has ever had. Buhari's cabal is not as dangerous as Tinubu's cabal. Tinubu has a cabal too. Oh my God. The most dangerous cabal we have in the history of the Nigerian government is the one of Tinubu. Because Tinubu's cabal is made up of very ambitious political elements that are very experienced in government. They are also educated. And so, they understand power relations more than even the president. So, guys, this ex-minister has come again. He said Tinubu has the most dangerous cabals. And you could see all the explanations and the way he described Tinubu's cabal. So, guys, Nigeria is not going to get better anytime soon with the kind of government we run. Honestly, that's not even the issue. In case you don't know, Erufai has now dumped the APC. For SDP, who knows what he's dreaming of? This it is the same Erufai who talked, who spoke about Christians and all that. Possibly he wants to run for the presidency. So, guys, a whole lot is happening in the Nigerian politics. And this man, this ex-minister, he's not happy with the way Tinubu is running the current administration, and he has come out to cry out on so many things that he's not comfortable with. So I'm going to allow you to watch this video. Just take your time, relax, and listen to some of the key things this man pointed out in this video, and drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Buhari's cabal is not as dangerous as Tinubu's cabal. Tinubu has a cabal too. Oh my God. The most dangerous cabal we have in the history of the Nigerian government is the one of uh, Tinubu. Because Tinubu's cabal is made up of very ambitious political elements that are very experienced in government. They are also educated. And so they understand power relations more than even the president. That's why you are, look at what happened the other time. There was a memo in the public space where the chief of staff approved three billion, signed and communicated to the minister of this ministry, the minister of inhumanitarian, I don't know the right word for it, but... Minister of Humanitarian Affairs. No, but I think the proper one is inhumanitarian affairs. That's coming from you. No, not from me, but from their conduct, what they have been doing. He sent that letter. And I expected the press to have engaged those who had ever been in government and seek to know what is the practice. Let's not dwell on just uh, the Tinubu administration alone. You served under uh, the Buhari government, which has today been described as one of the worst administrations we've had in Nigeria, the most corrupt so far in the history of Nigeria. How will you reconcile with that? I have acknowledged publicly that the Buhari administration failed. And I have my reasons. We campaigned in 2015 with a three point agenda insecurity, corruption, corruption. and the economy. economy. And after May 29, 2023, the indices of assessment should be based on these three things which was scaled up to next level in 2019. Because in 2015, it was changed. 2019, it was next, next level. level. Mm. <laughs> now, if you pronounce next level properly the way Nigerians are, they mm. get scared. Yes. Because it sent a neg negative signal of a bad omen to them. So on all even the, the change also is yeah. more like a negative word. Yeah, also. No, 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 nobody talks about change because immediately <laughs> you say change and they say which of the changes <laughs> I talk about. Yeah. So of these three things, which one did we succeed? Mm, which one? Which none. Insecurity escalated to an enterprise where it's, it's a big economy that is. It, even getting bigger than the Nigerian economy. And no part of Nigeria was peer. Hmm. Under Jonathan, it was a question of Northeast. Isolated to that side. Yes. But we took over and handed over to Tinubu, a country that is multidimensionally infested with different uh, conflict dynamics. Are you talking about the economy? 
We took over when the dollar was 187. Yes. yes. I remember it then. Yes. We ended over at 450 something. Was it? Uh, uh, six, uh, six, almost 700. Uh, yes, six or 700. Yes. You talk about uh, corruption. In one transaction, the accountant general <laughs> was involved in a corruption. Just one. No, we have no others. We, 190. 90 billion. 95 or 90? Very good. Billion. And the man now is, is a traditional ruler. It has never happened before. So of these three things which Buhari campaign would, we fell. Whatever Buhari would have done good, that was not what he promised Nigerians. Mm. You assess a politician based on his commitment. Mm. So we fell. Mm. So in your view, Buhari's administration failed? Yes. Okay. We'll come back and uh, look at now assessing what you are doing now and this current administration, how far and what is in it for Nigerians. Let's come back to the aspect of what you are doing now. Uh, since 1979, you said you've been active in politics. Uh, up to now, are you still active? And what is your political leaning now? Is it APC, PDP, LP, or which of the parties are you now part of? I'm a founding member of the APC, as you know. I served yes. in the APC administration. Yes. I was uh, uh, chairman, subcommittee of uh, contract and mobilization in Tinibu Strategic Council. Um, Babachi was our chairman. No, Ribadu was a member of my committee. But uh, I had to resign uh, when I met with uh, President Tinibu then. And um, I discovered that our conversation could not inspire hope, especially uh, he could not explain the rumor of the Muslim Muslim ticket. So I told myself, I mean, I cannot consistently be part of bad history, this country. Solomon Daron should be mentioned as responsible for bringing Buhari and again be mentioned in Tinubu's government. So I put up a resignation and left the party and also left his strategic council mm. and joined the Social uh, Democratic Party. SDP. Yeah, SDP. Uh, the last party. Mm. So I contested the 2023 House of Reps uh, election. But of course, when um, INEC decided that we were wrong to have gone campaigning uh, without coming to campaign in their offices. So Without coming to campaign in their yeah, offices? Yeah, you know, from the decision of the Supreme Court, we have learned a new mm. uh, definition of democracy now that if you are contesting election in Nigeria, don't waste your time going to the people. You need to go and campaign to INEC. Because the Supreme Court said, even if I next set rules at the dime minute, they, they can, can change it. They can just change the rules and do anything, and you can't hold them accountable. And that was what they did for us. They're not bound by their rules. No, no, no. I have even results of election in many places that I won, but I next declared me a loser. Mm. So, being an old politician who understood the game, mm. I did not want to waste my time and resources. Yeah, not and resources challenging it in court because I knew. The outcome will be what? What uh, it became? Yes. Especially when I, I, you were challenged to go to court. Yes, yeah, I was, I was even, <coughs> what even made discourage me from going was that the Professor Mahmoud, who had a joint collection of results to 10 a.m. in the morning. Yes. Walked up around 4 to declare a winner. And those whom he declared winners were also awake to jubilate. So I couldn't reconcile what happened. Mm. It means there was a communication between mm. him mm. and the purported winners. Otherwise, who told them that 4 o'clock was the time they were going to the, the declare the winner for them to jubilate? After he had promised Nigerians 10 a.m. 10, 10 a.m. And then the statement he made that if you are dissatisfied, go to court. Immediately, I remembered the East African proverb that said, if a thief asks you to go to court, he is confident that the judge is his brother. So right now, you are a member of SDP. Social Democratic Party. Is that the party that uh, Erufai, the former governor of uh, Kaduna State, is seen to be uh, now associating with? And is it true that he's leaving your party, as the uh, former party, your former party as well? Uh, no, uh, well, um, gov former governor Erufai visited the... Chairman of your party. Yeah, in office. And the previous day, they had uh, 
uh, had iftar yeah. uh, together. So I do not want to think that uh, he only went there to reciprocate the gesture mm. of the iftar, because if that was the reason, he could have equally gone to his house. But uh, going to the office, like I, tell, like I told you earlier, as a politician, you know, we analyze everything. And uh, looking at that visit, I'm still in, in, in my office uh, reviewing and analyzing. But what I can tell Nigerians is that I smelled the changing of dimension in 2027. And, and so those who are very, very confident and insulting people, and uh, very, they are also bold to tell the people that we can uh, grab a power and, uh, and run, with it. run away with it. 2027, even, beginning with even a Edo's, uh, Edo's election, nobody is going to allow you to grab any power and run with it again you know, in this country. It's not going to work. We have learned it the better way. And uh, INEC will not even be used again to announce results. They must announce results of election. 2027 politics is already playing out because uh, you can see the politicians already aligning, realigning, and all of that. So the politicians the, 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 are elected. <laughs> the government itself, yes, on the day of inauguration, started the campaigning for 2027. So the politicians are elected because if the politicians were reading the body language of this government, they should have known. That I mean, the president appointing people from Lagos, mm. from his household, businessmen into offices holding strategic location. He's already planning for 2027 so that all the juicy agencies and ministries, resources, uh, will be amassed. So we'll have a very strong war chest. But is the opposition ready to engage the ruling party? Isn't no, the true? opposition in Nigeria is always unpredictable. APC came just a year. To election, yeah, to send and Jonathan, out, out yes, to send Jonathan Parking. The Nigerian opposition is highly unpredictable, and the current government has fertilized the Nigerian political landscape for strategic planning to root them out in 2027. They have weaponized hunger. Today, Nigerians are dying in millions because of hunger. They can't afford anything to eat. And the government is preaching the gospel of a sacrifice. While there is no sign of sacrifice from their own end. From the president and his men. He's traveling with his children, collecting estacot. He's going for COP uh, conference in Dubai with the highest delegation in the world. He's going to traveling to France for a private visit while signing government. Uh, letters and memo in, in a foreign country still governing us from there. So all this sum up together. And the, the, the endemic corruption now that has been foundation in this government in seven months in the Ministry of Inhumanitarian Affairs, <laughs> we have a four T billion transfer from one account in four days, mm. which is unheard of. Buhari administration also has its own flaws. He's your mentor. Is he still your mentor? Yeah, but he's still a mentor. With the flaws that has been very well stated about yeah. his government. That's why I'm even I'm among those people that are still saying that he failed. And he's still your mentor? Yes, he's still a mentor. How can you reconcile that? When no, you... I respect him. Mm. You see, I know Buhari very well. I know him as a person very well. Mm. Buhari presidency taught me a lot of lessons. What I learned from Buhari is that it's not enough for you to have integrity and be good. If you can't translate that into action, then you are worse than a bad man. That is what happened to Buari. Mm. Buari could not translate his own personal attributes. Mm. Rather, he brought people around him who looted the treasury drive. Under his watch. It, it, ah, watchful eyes. Yes. They caged him. They caged uh, him. Yes, let me tell you something. In 2018, there was a debate whether Buhari was going to continue contest 2019 or not. I went to his office because I saw a vision in the night that if you contest the election, he will win. But they are going to fight him to a standstill. They will reduce him. In fact, I saw a situation whereby he was locked in the villa as a president while some people were ruling the country. And that at the end of his tenure, 
If you call his name, Nigerians will be crying. So I went to his office and related this vision to him and then discouraged him to be Mandela. Let him just go back home and rest, which is a good name. But that is the contest election he was going to win. But if he wins the election, he's going to be to run the worst political battle in the history of this country, and he will live with a bad name. Then he was asking me, why would they fight him? And I told him there are four reasons why they will fight you. Reason number one, you succeeded as a military man. Came back with succeed in politics. Those who are selected in politics will not allow you to go, uh, go free. Number two, there is this more Ibrahim um, prize for African leadership. Nobody has won. If you are allowed quietly, you will not do 30 man. You may want that. Problem number three is self-inflicted by you. Anywhere you go, you go with chains and say, oh, I'm going to jail criminals. I'm going to jail corruption. And you didn't define which type of corruption, corrupt people are going to jail. And I told him, I said, the next person standing by you is the most corrupt person. So if you do not define which type of corrupt people you are fighting, he's going to undermine you. Mm. And, and we and ended that, the discussion. The well, he contested. He won. Form government. Mm. Today, if you call Buhari's name, mm. people will begin to cry. Mm. Let me put it on record. That Buhari was the only president in the history of this country that common people invested in his campaign. But he disappointed them. He failed them. Mm. So if the president, the current president we are watching now, as we conclude, uh, with all the numerous challenges that the country is faced with, which area will you advise him to show commitment to? He missed the opportunity to write his name in gold on the day of inauguration. And he did what? He should have admitted the disputed polls that it was flawed. Because I next said there was technical glitch. Mm. Meaning that anything that comes out of it mm. cannot be credible. So he should have admitted and would have earned the confidence of Nigerians. Let me tell you, I didn't support Yaradua in 2027. In 2007. 2007. I was a chairman of a local government in PDP, but I used the money to campaign for Buari. But I became Yaradua's man till he died, and today I'm Yaradua in debt when he admitted that the election that brought him the power was flawed. Oh my God. He earned my confidence and I stood with him with my life until he's dead. And I can still die for Yaradua even now that he's dead because he's an honest man. Tinubu missed that opportunity. Instead of that, he now unleashed trauma on Nigerians with the subsidy is gone. gone. Without any plan in place. There is no plan. Now, what is he supposed to do? A lot of people have been asking a way forward. We don't criticize only because we hate him. No, we love him. But we, for me, I am opposed to his style of administration. It's not leadership, it's not patriotic. The first thing he has to do, all those economic theories they are giving him, they are only leading him to his grave. He must crash the prices of fuel. There must be Nigerians before Nigeria. True. Crash the prices of fuel to 200 and crash the prices of foodstuff, even if it includes importing, import food, so that the prices of food can come down. Then you will have a strategic plan of how to deal with the situation. Because Nigerians are dying of hunger. Yeah. Look, I, I, I went to the village and I couldn't stay. I couldn't stay. I mean, human beings, somebody coming to tell you that for five days, and he has children. They haven't seen food to Yes. Eat. And the children will come to you and say, hey, Grandpa, we are hungry. And tears will run down my eyes. It's sad. Is this what is leadership? It's sad. Come so, Let's end it here. Thank you. It's sad that the situation great. of the country is like this. Yeah. Before you get emotional, thank you for the opportunity. You're welcome. This is Nigeria right now with Dixon and Irabu. And of course, what we do on the show is to highlight the areas that will promote patriotism who came this way to engage a man whose burning desire to see a great Nigeria is very obvious. You can see it oozing out in uh, Comrade Solomon Dalong. Let me give this word to the leaders out there. Nigerians would come first before Nigeria will exist. This is quoting Comrade Solomon Dalong. And that fact, I embrace it. If we would build Nigeria, then we should put Nigerians first at all times. If this country will become great, 
It needs your sacrifice, my sacrifice, and our collective interest will be on the table at all times, not the interest of a few. On this show, I'll see you same time next week. Nigeria, right now. Soon after the 24 local governments in the three states were reclaimed, I mean, we jettisoned that arrangement. Mm. And in 2018, we were welcomed with uh, banditry in Zampara. Now, when banditry started in Zampara, we took the president to tax in council and told him, look, you are a general. You must take the battle to the doorstep of the enemy. So you have to go to the forest in Zampara. And if you could recollect, Buari dressed in a military mm. uniform. Is it possible that there is some form of voodoo out there that can make these terrorists when they get you know to their victim they can disappear because i don't i can't fathom students taking away from kaduna to far away zamfara state and no trace if it is any voodoo is the voodoo of the dollar within the cycle of um, the criminal enterprise of uh, kidnapping there's no any voodoo in it this is just impunity at its peak. And like I said, the, ter the, 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 the terrorists shared the sovereignty with the president of Nigeria. They control territories, they collect taxes. Honorable Minister, what is going on? Because I'm afraid for our country. Um, I, I don't know. Anybody watching now, some foreigner out there watching would wonder, do you have a government in your country? Do we have a government in Nigeria? Having been in government, yes. Um, what I can conclude that is happening is, yeah, we have some people occupying government offices in Nigeria, but they have not satisfied the requirement of a government. Because what is known as a government is constitutionally provided for. They have not been able to do that. The welfare, security, security. of lives and property. Yes, and property. They have definitely been. So they, we have some people occupying government offices, uh, distributing resources to themselves and their cronies, in-laws, and the committee of advanced concubines. We have those type of people here. And so when you look at their attitude, is disconnected from the reality of a government. I, I, I saw partially the First Republic as a young person. Uh, I saw the Civil War. I ran into the trenches during the Civil War. Hmm. I participated in the Second Republic because I was a political in 1979. And have been in, po in politics from that 1979 till then. I have never seen a government like what we are dealing with. In fact, let me take it slightly back to my mentor, Buari. You see, when we were in government, some of these excesses, we dealt with it and it became personal conflict between us and some so-called power court that designated themselves cabal. Because, like for me, I would have been removed as a minister seven days into office. Removed? Yes. By whom? By the president. If the president had listened to his late chief of staff, we went for a state function. Seven days as a minister. We went for a state function. And the late chief of staff, Abakari, embarrassed me in front of the president, top government official diplomats and the congregation or the audience and what did he do when the president emerged it was a sport event i collected an award on behalf of the president and i was presenting same to him so i was the leader of the government delegation in that arrangement as soon as the president emerged to take his seat Leda Bakari looked at me and told the president, why will you allow this boy to be wearing this type of thing? 
That is referring to yes, referring to comradery. My khaki <laughs> and red beret, which I was what I used to even campaign for the government. But because I was trained by my father that if a young man of your age slap you publicly, don't wait for a second, retaliate before any other intervention. That if you don't do that, next time when you advance as elders, he will slap you again. So I didn't want to pretend that I wanted to be a minister and leave by carry to go away with this injustice that he ran on my person. So I looked back at him and I pointed my hand like I told the president, Mr. President, can you call Abakari to order? Who told him that that is Solomon Selkabdalum is very comfortable with what he's wearing? He's wearing 10 yards meant for three people dressed. <laughs> and I'm not complaining. Then he's complaining about me wearing two and a half yards. I said, sir, do you know how bitter I am that some people do not have what to wear and he's carrying this thing on his body? <laughs> so the president didn't say anything. At that, at that level, I'm just trying to visualize what could have played out. <laughs> no, so the president didn't say anything. He just kept quiet. Yes. We concluded the program and then before he could leave, he looked at Abakari and said, I have warned you severally to stay away from this boy, but you will not hear. You can imagine how smart this boy is and how he has embarrassed you. Mm. And by extension also embarrassed me because I'm also wearing three men's, three men's clothes. <laughs> so you indicted the yes. president as well. Oh, so the, the, the. You, 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 you see, you, you need to understand how this thing government works. Works. There are very ambitious elements in government. If you are elected a president of Nigeria, yeah. If you do not get the appointment of your chief of staff right, if you do not get the appointment of the National Security Advisor right, if you do not get the appointment of the Minister of Justice right, if you do not get the appointment of Secretary to Government right, you have missed everything. Hmm. And the key offices. Look, the office of the chief of staff became a very ambitious power base. During Bwari. We are Abakari, late Abakari, was more or less like the de facto president. He was visible. He stands in official pictures with the diplomats and the president, mm. which had never happened before with any chief mm. of staff. But what will you, how will you relate it with the happening now? It's right. worse. Mm. You see? Tinobu's cabal is the most dangerous of all the cabals. In the nigerian history so guys you have seen it for yourself honestly this governance of a thing in nigeria is like an enterprise for a particular gang honestly these people don't mean well for nigerians they don't mean well for us they just want to take power for their own selfish interest and you can see it for yourself just tell me what and what has this government achieved since it came into power what and what has this government achieved? They've been battling, you know, the Naira devaluing because things were not addressed properly. How can you just come and remove subsidy? And currently we've been told that, uh, that subsidy wasn't removed. Subsidy is still there. Say oh, a whole lot of confusion. And that is why some of the investors are even scared coming to Nigeria. I mean, even real Nigerians who are in the diaspora. Some of them who plan to come to Nigeria to invest in this 2024. They are not having that, you know, that inspiration again. The motivation is no longer there to come and invest because of the way things are going. So somebody was recounting how much she lost after they borrowed money from a bank in the UK to come invest in Nigeria. And now that the Naira has been devaluing, all that money has been lost. So, guys, that is it. That is the Nigeria of today. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Turn on the notification bell. Thank you.